Who puts the fun in funding? I have him here with us today, Danny from Provide, hanging out with Stephen from Ideal Practices. These two are the dream makers. Buy an old broken down practice like I did, blah, that sounds boring. Start your own dental practice from scratch. Create your own beautiful unicorn. In fact, call it unicorn dentistry if you want to. So Stephen and Danny, we're here to talk about startups and you know, is it a good idea to start a practice in this economy? Can you get money for it? In this fun sitcom length webinar, big fan of Family Ties, we are going to dig into this topic. So Stephen, I'll let you introduce yourself first. Amazing sponsor, pretty good golfer. Tell us about yourself. Pretty good golfer. Yes, pretty, pretty good. You know, you just never know what the course is going to give you. Um, I am Stephen Trudder, CEO of Ideal Practices. I get the great pro privilege of working with some of the greatest professionals at Ideal Practices, where we get to take and guide associate dentists all across the country and providing the um, expert service of uh, consulting for them to start up their practice. And uh, I got the greatest group of professionals, uh, the greatest group of, of individuals here at Ideal that um, just care so much about associate dentists to get them to that next level. So uh, that's what I get to do. And then awesome. you, know, you, you have, you have made dreams time come time. true for our nacho dentist. Two of my favorites, the Ashleys. You can uh, tag Ashley Dawson and Ashley Dubois. They've been here to fill it up for boost camp. So I'm going to go to my next guest. And I start this out. I, I lectured about uh, these teams. And growing up, nothing happened unless your mom said yes. And the bank is your mom because you can want to create purple cabinets and technology from the future. But you can't do any of it unless someone gives you money. And this is Danny Camerasano from Provide. Danny, share with us how you give dentists money on a daily basis to make sure. their startup dreams come true. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, I'll introduce myself. Uh, well, you already did, but Danny Camerasano, I've been in the banking business for a total of 18 years now. Um, I've been lending money to small business owners for the last 12 years. <laughs> and the last six of those years have been spent really specializing in the dental industry. Um, I work for Provide. Provide is a dental specialty lender. We are the fastest growing practice lender in the country by far, already one of the biggest practice lenders in the industry. Um, and the thing that makes us really unique, really different than all of our competitors is that we didn't actually start as a bank at all. We started as an independently owned um, private lending company, a financial technology company. So we built out an online platform that gives our borrowers a streamlined online experience. And we couple that with personalized customer service from people like me and my team. Um, Your marketing thinks to be, you don't have to fill out 97 pieces of paper to get a loan. Is that basically, is that, is that, am I right correct. with that? Correct. So that's allowed us to provide like a really seamless, efficient experience for our borrowers. Um, in general, like you said, it's just made it it's made it a lot easier for people to do business with us. Um, and it's made it faster and easier than ever to get funding for a practice. Um, awesome. And I want to share, uh, thanks for wearing our sweatshirt. Steve, we've got to get you a sweatshirt down there in Florida. I don't know if there's one day a year you can wear it, but we'll get you a sweatshirt or Northeaster. So let's dig into, you know, how to start a practice with success and not stress. And Stephen, just give us your daily life mm -hmm. is talking to dentists that are starting practices. Yeah. How is this possible? Why are they why are banks and ideal practices and Rob Montgomery, the attorney and accountants, why are they confident that a dentist can start a practice from scratch and be successful? Um, I, I think there's there's a number of factors. I think it's the preparation that goes into this. I know uh, in working with Danny's team um, a number of times, you know, the feedback that we always get from them is uh, our clients are the most prepared for the lending conversation. They're most prepared financially for that. Because you got to have a plan to go in to talk to a bank. Yeah. You can't just say, hey, cool. Hey, bank, I just want to do this without <laughs> knowing your production. You're not knowing the background that's there. Uh, so it's it's having a plan to go in and be able to have that conversation so that the banks are willing to give you the best terms uh, the, and you know, the best conditions for lending. But if you're not prepared to have that conversation, then those underwriting team, the underwriting team is not going to approve that request or they're going to have certain restrictions. So I think it's about having a, a, a preparation uh, what we call the we call it the silver platter. We want to put our clients on a silver platter so that the banks are like just want to salivate over getting lending. So I think that's it's the preparation that goes into that. And just overall, like the environment's here. Is is there risk involved? Absolutely. Like, hey, listen, um, you know, 
there's the default rate from a banking perspective, and Danny can talk to this, it's like very low when it comes to any dental professional. But the difference is, is that we're not talking, we're talking about failure as opposed to like uh, uh, growth. And so I think there's a lot of practice owners that go out there, they open a practice, they buy a practice, and they struggle for a couple of years, but they're still paying the loan back to the to the bank. So I always say, don't get mixed up in the fact that this, this because the bank says yes, doesn't mean that this is a great idea and you should go do it without having a plan to actually launch a practice. So so important, Stephen, because the definition of success, I've never heard described once as not failing, right? As Rob Montgomery right. says, people don't wake up and say, I don't want to feel like Danny. You know, let's just say a new dentist is watching this and they say, you know, I could buy a practice, I could start up a practice. You know, why are you comfortable and what makes you comfortable as a bank handing over $750,000 to a dentist to start a dental practice? Yeah, sure. Well, first of all, to just address, should they buy or should they start? I think that's an individual um, answer for for each entrepreneurial dentist. Like there's not a, there's no right answer to that question. If someone wants to buy, that's great. Someone wants to start, that's great as well. I think if there was a right answer to that question, nobody would do the other thing. Yeah. Um, but to answer your question about why does a bank feel confident in um, lending money for its startup, it's in the default rates, like you guys were just talking about. Banks are like, obviously, as people, as human beings, we want to see our borrowers be super successful. And that's great for us as well for future business. But when we underwrite a startup loan, our primary concern is can that borrower pay our loan back? And yeah. given historical data, we have enough data where we can confidently project what we think our borrowers are going to be able to do in year one, year two, year three, year four. And um, the default rates on these loans are, you know, less than less than one percent, depending who you ask, less than five percent, less than one percent. Um, they're low. They're it's one of the lowest uh, default rates in any industry in the United States. Um, so banks are really confident. These are basically the, the closest things you can get to a U.S. Treasury for a bank. So the, awesome. The and it, it, so dentists should feel good about this. You know who doesn't like us? People. You know who does like us? Banks, right? Banks like us. So at least put that is as a top notch for dentists, right? Do our patients hate us? Most definitely. But banks, they really like us, Stephen. So we got that going for us. At least we got that going for us. Like Bill Murray at the end of Caddyshack, you know, when he was going to get uh, whatever a special consciousness at the end of his life. He goes, at least yeah. we got that going. <laughs> now, Stephen, let's talk about, you know, there's really well-intentioned dentists yep. that do things that make them want to cry inside. And I think a lot of it has to do with not getting the right team in place. Giving me a little bit like, why is it so difficult to DIY your startup? You know, whether it's dealing with the contractors, if you just said, hey, I totally understand why you might want to try to do this all on your own, but I do this every day and this is something you should watch out for. Give us a couple of watch out factors in the process of startups that would cause a time suck, that would cause an energy suck, that would cause a financial suck, or would just suck. That was pretty good, or it just suck. So give us a couple of watch out factors. Yeah, I think I think the DIY approach can work for a, some people if you've done it multiple times um, or done it many, many times. And I think the, the idea behind DIY in a lot of cases is like, there's some sort of rite of passage, I think sometimes for dentists, uh, Paul, where it's like, if I bootstrap this and I struggle for three years, yeah. I'm gonna feel better about this that sucks. That actually sucks. Like why struggle? Yeah. And I think there's two, there's two mentalities out there. There is growth, there's growth mentality and there's savings mentality. I think when it comes to the, the idea that DIY, I'm going to save money by not having to buy people or buy higher end services, but no one's ever saved themselves to prosperity when it came to starting a practice. So if you want to focus on saving strategy to become successful, um, you're, you're not, no one's ever going to come around and say, I saved myself to a successful startup practice, as opposed to how do I focus on growth strategies? So I would much rather say, focus on growth strategies, having the right team, having the right marketing strategy, having the right elements that are there. Now, no one's going to be successful by buying Italian, a travertine tile in for their practice. No one's ever going to be like, I was successful because of that. Yeah. But I think assembling, avoiding the DIY approach, in my perspective, is simply saying, great, I have a right team that's done this hundreds of times. I've got professionals that can navigate this, that can give guidance and avoid the, the typical pitfalls that are going to exist. There are going to be pitfalls. And I've done this 800 times, by the way. 
Um, there, there's something that's going to happen on the 801st startup. I'm going to say, huh, never saw that happen before. Um, and then, you know, but guess what? I and you're someone my who does it every day. One, what's going to happen? I like this, Stephen. You can use this example. You guys are free here. I'm giving you your free tips here. So I hope you guys send me some nachos. You can say to a dentist, you know how you've extracted teeth hundreds of times and that one tooth gives you so much trouble and you work through lunch and you struggle with that? That happens to us too because anytime you do a thing of any kind, you, you encounter new challenges. And one thing I can share before I go to Danny is there's no time to do this during your associate job. There's no time to do this during your nine to six. And I think what people don't understand is that whether it's the contractor, whether it's Rob Montgomery, whether it's your accountant, whether it's the marketing, they want to talk to you while you're working at your practice. And it's very difficult slash impossible to do that. Danny, I want to ask you about you. Mitch Hedberg had a good joke. Uh, I'm tired of chasing my dreams. I'm just going to uh, ask where they're going and catch up with them later. And I thought that was funny, right? And he, he gets, but think about the timing for your dream. Talk to us a little bit about timing. You loan money to a dentist. When are they usually opening from loan to this? Most of the time. I know this can vary. Yeah, it does vary greatly. It, it really, and Stephen would know this probably better than me or maybe uh, just as well as I do. But um, so it can vary. The, to me, the, the um, challenge that I see often is how long it takes to find a space. And so it can take... I mean, you can find a space the first time you go out touring. So you can find a space a week after you get approved for a loan. Sometimes I'm seeing a year, a year yes. and a half after. And it yes. also depends on like the dentist and how picky they are and how like, do they want to be in an exact location, an exact town, um, or are they more open to relocating or going to, you know, a little bit further out of their desired radius? Um, typically, I would say from the time that we actually get a loan approved, to the time that they open their doors, say a little over a year, 12. Okay, so what I want to share with my audience, because neither of you two are dentists, I'm the only one who's a dentist, is that if you're thinking about doing this, start the process early, connect with people early, because I think I'm sure Stephen has gotten these calls in two days. I hate my associate job. They're treating me, but I don't like it. I want to leave tomorrow. I want to start a practice. Well, guess what? You're there for another year. This happens to me with implants. Oh, I'm ready for my teeth to be removed and be replaced. I'm ready to chew and smile with confidence. I say, hey, Millie, it's going to be an eight-month process. So you're going to be with me for eight months while we do this. Stephen, would you kind of, that timeline, a little over a year, does that fit into your most from loan yeah. funding to opening? Yeah, 100%. I think it's even from the idea onset, it's at least a minimum of 12 months. Can it get done earlier? Sure. But the X factor, like Danny said, it's real estate. That is the X factor. And certain markets are even more challenging when it comes to real estate. Um, so, and just timelines of getting construction and permits, like everything has um, taken more time. And if you're going to a growth area where you're, you, you may be signing a lease, like this happens a lot in some markets where there's growth, you're, you're signing a lease on dirt. The building hasn't even been out of the ground yet, but the landlord has to get enough leases signed in order to be able to perfect their funding behind the scenes in order to actually build the building that you're gonna, going to go into. So you have to factor that in. So if I, if I lined up, probably a hundred clients that we've helped every single one of them, the advice they'd probably give to anybody there is start, start now, start before, like right. don't wait because it, it's not even the timing, but you can't, you can't, you're not going to be 100% prepared, but you need to be, you got to be able to have the jumping off point. And the timeline is going to be so influenced by a lot of factors that none of us have control over and responses when it comes to finding real estate. I, I think that's such a key point because starting earlier than you think and everything is such a good tip in as, as a life skill. One of the things is, I want to ask you guys this, you know, as we kind of barrel towards our end of our sitcom, I wish people told my patients to go into the dentist and not tell us that they hate us because believe it or not, dentists have feelings too. And it's not a relationship builder. When I meet a patient and say, Hey, dentist, nice to meet you. I'm Dr. Paul. And he says, I just want to let you know, I hate the dentist. And I say, I just want to let you know, dentist, you could have kept that in your head. So what do you wish your clients were prepared for, Danny? If I, if I could help you through this nacho community so you can help dentists re realize their dreams, what are some things that you want them to be thinking about, whether it's saving money, not having credit card debt, uh, in, engaging with a CPA early? It's your floor. Tell our audience what you wish your potential clients knew earlier, prepared for earlier. 
So I think this goes hand in hand with what you guys were just addressing is like starting as early as possible, talking to people like myself, talking to people like Steven's team, um, just gain as much knowledge as you can, do your research as early as possible. It's time really is money. Um, you have no idea how many times like I, I'm talking to a prospective borrower who, you know, they're dead set on, uh, and going back to our other conversation, dead set on buying a practice. And they're in the market, they're looking, they can't find what they want, but they are dead set on finding it. And three years later, they come back to me and they're like, hey, I'm ready to start a practice now. Now you're looking at another 12 to 18 months before you actually get into that practice. And guess what? If you would have started three years ago, you'd already have that ideal practice, uh, you know, forgive the pun. Yeah, uh, I like it. True, like it. if you would have just started and taken some advice from some advisors in the market, you know, you would have already have that practice. I, watch this. You should use this. It's never, it's never too early to start working on your dentisting dreams. Use that. It's never too early to go. start working on your dreams. I love that. Stephen, we are giving away your awesome book. I put it in the chat here. Team put it on Dental Nachos, the Startup Dentist book. We have limited supply of free books. Thanks to Dennis Job Connect of Stephen's awesome book as a sponsor. What do you wish they knew about before they talk to you? Think about the whether it is who they need to connect with, whether it is keeping track of their production, give us a, a two, Steve and I wish my clients knew more about this. I think I, I think it's looking beyond, I think the the timeline. Yep, but that's one thing and to Danny's point, like talking about like, you may look for a practice for two years. I'm not, listen, I do startups, but I am an advocate for practice ownership. If they if it's a, if it's a purchase, great. If it's a startup, awesome. Uh, but starting that that like, real early. I think the other thing is, is like think beyond clinical dentistry. How are you going to connect in your community? How will you make yeah. a difference? And what are you aiming towards on a long-term basis? These are the things that we have to start thinking about even early on. And this is stuff that we prompt our clients to think about this long range, like uh, what, how do they want to be remembered in the legacy because and how they're going to connect in the community and what is the purpose? It can't just be dentistry, but what is a bigger purpose? That is going to be the difference maker in terms of connecting to the community and making a difference in the lives of other people and themselves. Yeah, I love that. I've been, I've gone for you too. Uh, it's even treatment plan your career awesomeness. Use that because us dentists are treatment planning all the time. Us dentists go nacho nuts when patients don't have a good treatment plan or don't learn. So you need a treatment plan your own career awesomeness for success. Well, you two have been fantastic. Danny, how can someone reach out to you to learn more about what Provide does as a Nacho Key Resource and sponsor? Sure. Email is daniel.camerasano. We'll put that in the chat. Yeah, my last name's kind of long, uh, but that's at getprovide.com and cell phone number 347-585-4999. Awesome. We'll put that in too. Stephen, how about you? Steven at idealpractices.com and just look at idealpractices.com and uh, pick up a copy before you do anything, get a copy of, of the book. Thank you, Paul, for being uh, like an awesome host here to be able to push this book out to get everyone before you step into, before you call a bank, before you start looking at real estate, like read, I got great resources on the ton of these topics to help get everybody prepared for that leap into pri private practice ownership. And awesome. I can vouch for that. I have read the book, so it's amazing. Awesome. Well, it's, Thanks, a, it's coming into the summer. Get the book for the summer. We have some free ones you're giving away. And also, if you're listening or watching, if you text the word startup to 215-798-9897, we'll provide you with all of our startup resources. Even though I buy practices, even though I sell practices, I'm still friends with my unicorn dream makers here because both <laughs> are great options to realize your dream. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks.